All right, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another Discard 2 Reroll Casually Competitive Deck Tech Series. So this one is kind of a jab at Mr. Chip. He uh, slyfully said on air that I do not have any respect for Hero Blue Melee decks. So I thought I would go out and prove him wrong. And I am going to bring you guys a Mace Windu Ayla Sakura deck. And this is really what I think are you know, the, the final hope of Blue Melee is this pairing right here. Uh, I don't think a lot of other characters really have what it takes. The only, uh, I guess, honorable mention would be Luke 3. I think that he has really good matchup with uh, being able to place a bunch of shields on him and kind of just go from there. But we're going to go with uh, Mace Windu. He is from Convergence. So 11 health. We're going to be playing him at 16 at Elite. Uh, he's a hero, obviously. Uh, he's the Inspired Master. His die sides are pretty good, so we got 50% damage sides. Uh, we have the two focus side and the resource side and a blank. But really why we want to play him so badly is his power action. It says, look at the top four cards of your deck. You may play an upgrade from among them. Place the rest of the cards at the bottom of your deck in any order. If that upgrade was played on a Jedi, give it one shield. So we got two Jedi's here. We uh, we could certainly, you know, place these, those upgrades on whoever we like. Now there was some confusion I saw in uh, Facebook chat. The question was, is it free? It is not free. You do have to pay for it. I honestly think that they were just running out of text, so they made it uh, kind of assumed. So, you know, there's that. Uh, then we have over here Ala Sakura. She is 10 health. We're going to be playing her at 13. So if you're not aware, this was eroded. Uh, she is a 10, 13. That is her, her die cost. So again, 50% damage sides. We do have the indirect side. Not too much of a big deal when we can just push out damage. She has a special. It says turn one of your blue or red dice to any side. Then uh, you can turn an opponent's die to any side. So really good because it's aggressive and defensive it's a, a focus for you and kind of like a negative focus against them but we're going to be using her to uh really just kind of dish out some some heavy damage uh aggro uh you know it out with uh with these two characters 50 percent damage sides we got the melee to pair we have the focusing uh we have the disruptive focusing that ayla provides so it should be a good time. Then we have our battlefield is Obi-Wan's Hut. Now, I was going to go with something like the Salt Flats because if you see over here, Mace Windu is a leader. But my one concern was I am uh, kind of a lower health deck. I only have 21 health. So I wanted to make sure that, you know, being a faster deck, I'll be able to claim and then be able to take that uh, that shield on one of my characters so that's really huge i think that this card is uh, going to see a lot of play i've seen a lot of people be put they're putting it in palpatine decks so uh, be on the lookout for obi-wan's hut now moving into the upgrades i have it organized here kind of on curve cost so it's going to start with your two cost upgrades and then move up to your three cost so we have two copies of republic jedi armor now again this is to help kind of this low health pool that we are starting off with and then it introduces the shields that we actually don't have on, on any of our character dice so this is, becomes kind of like the utility uh, upgrade you could certainly overwrite uh, you know, over top of this, but this is going to allow us to, uh, you know, bolster up our health just a little bit more. So if you think about it, if you were able to put this on Mace Window, he's going to become 12 health, and then he gets one shield. Now all of a sudden he's 13 health. Uh, same thing with Ayla, she becomes 12 health. So think about this as a two-point uh, character, you know, increase as far as health goes, and then we're able to roll this die in and see all those lovely shield sides and uh, be able to uh, to extend the life of our characters. Moving on, we have probably the best two-cost melee upgrade in the game, uh, kind of lightsaber blue upgrade, and it is uh, Ezra Bridger's lightsaber, so we only have it at a one cost because it is a unique upgrade. It has redeploy. It has a, fo a um, special that we can kind of focus into uh, if need be with Ayla, and uh, it's just a really great card. Uh, obviously, we're not going to be playing Ezra, so we don't get the, the second effect of the card, but overall, it's just a lot of value for uh, two-cost. Moving on, we have, again, this is probably pound for pound. Okay, 
Ezra is probably the best, but this is pound for pound the best melee-based um, upgrade when it comes to the new set and rotation uh, for its cost. So this is Luke Skywalker's Lightning Rod. It basically mimics... Um, the die sides that we see on Mace Windu, except for it has a shield and a resource and a blank. So it replaces the two focus with a shield. And uh, we're we're not going to pay attention to this text at all because we do not have a Luke Skywalker on board. So do not worry about that. It's just a good, like I said, pound for pound uh, blue upgrade to have in the deck. We have two copies of Treasured Lightsaber. Now, again, this is a, a utility upgrade, something that we're able to play out. It does have some melee sides on it. Uh, mind you, they are modified, so we are going to have to pair them up with other sides. But it allows us to draw a card, and then its special is really good. It says deal two unblockable damage. That's great. Well, you can increase that to three unblockable damage instead if you have five or more cards in your hand. So the great thing about this card is you could play it, it automatically increases the cards in your hand. So I, I really do like that. Um, another thing that kind of uh, a little bit of synergy with Mace Windu is if you're able to play a card out, uh, say, uh, you know, an upgrade, and then you are uh, able to activate Mace Windu and then dig for a treasured, since it's not another card coming out of your hand, you would play the treasured and then you draw back up to five cards. So it's really strong, kind of uh, really cool synergy in that that regard uh, but like I said it, it's great the uh, unblockable at a three it is huge and we're able to focus into that and special chain with Ayla we have one copy I'm not super high on this card I'll be honest with you but it's you know kind of the, the namesake lightsaber of the deck uh, we have Mace Windu's lightsaber uh, die sides are okay uh, you know the one side on it kind of really uh, is underwhelming uh, but I do like the two um, shields and the special is pretty cool it says deal two unblockable damage to a character then if that character is at one health you can defeat it so it's a callback to his original um, I guess action or ability uh, on the the mace the first mace window and then it has a power action to spot mace window to move this upgrade onto him so it's cool it kind of has a little bit of like that luke 3 effect but it's only specific to this upgrade uh, moving on we have another redeployable upgrade it is ray's lightsaber uh, this is just a great card in any blue hero deck um, that is utilizing the, the melee damage. Uh, it's got great melee damage, 50%. There is a modified and there is a pay one, uh, but it also has the ability that when it comes into play, it's going to put one shield on, on one of our characters. So super huge. Uh, really like to, uh, you know, extend the life of these, uh, these two little characters here. All right, another card that is going to help us just stay around a little bit longer. It is Suresu Mastery. So there's a lot of text on here. It says play uh, on a blue character only and limit to one form per character. So we don't have too many forms in the game, but as the game evolves, I'm sure we will see more forms because this is an upgrade ability form. It says after you play this upgrade, you may remove a die showing damage. So it's very similar uh, to what was it? The DL44, you know, in uh, Sabine decks, where you're actually able to play it and then, you know, remove an opponent's die. But uh, this one is specific to damage. And then it is uh, has a special on here. It says remove a die showing damage and give a character one shield. So the rest of the die sides, it is has no blanks. So that's super huge value for a three cost upgrade. No blanks. And it is just straight utility slash uh, longevity. It just everything is good about it. It's mitigation on board. It's mitigation that we can special chain into. It is, you know, two t sides of it are two shields like that's huge uh it's got the two focus everything on this card is really good uh you know just uh you know get out the the uh the, you know, some of this, the smaller costing upgrades first, and then you can certainly overwrite into this. And you might be diminishing your, your damage output, but you are increasing your longevity of your characters. And then we got two copies of Heirloom Lightsaber. Now, I haven't seen Heirloom getting uh, too much love, in, you know, in, in this this current format, but it is because Blue Heroes is, is considered a little bit weak right now. But it's a redeploy. It's basically for us, it's a redeploy uh, three cost melee weapon. Uh, you could have found this card in the Luke Skywalker uh, starter deck back in Legacies. So I remember this card was uh, highly played and uh, definitely uh, sought after. So we're bringing back the Heirloom Lightsaber and we're going to throw two copies in this deck.
So with all the blue upgrades, we are certainly going to put in the It Binds All Things. Now, you can play this copy or you can play, uh, you know, your new updated art version copy. Uh, I'm certainly going to roll with all my kind of OG arts um, because I think that that's really cool. It's like a callback to, uh, you know, when I first started playing the game. So uh, certainly cool. Uh, this is great because it, it allows us to save a, a little bit on these upgrades. We don't have a bunch of ramp or, or resource generation, so being able to have this on board early uh, is really good once you start seeing this card later in the game and if you haven't seen it early it's pretty dead so uh, you know be mindful of that when you are playing this deck so moving on to the events uh, because we are kind of going to be at the mercy of a lot of uh, support decks out there. I'm going to pack two copies of Electromagnetic Pulse. So it's for zero cost, remove a droid or vehicle dice. So just super huge value. Uh, I really do like that. Uh, you know, at, at, at worst, it's, you know, just a card from our hand or, or pitch to reroll if it doesn't apply. So uh, just be, uh, be, be mindful that there are certain matchups where this isn't going to, this isn't going to apply at all. Uh, two copies of Twin Strike. Uh, I like this card. It's super live. Um, you know, it, we can certainly hit for like uh, four indirect, pay nothing if we're able to remove or, or resolve two uh, blue character dice that are showing melee. You just quick resolve Mace Windows 2-2 two, two as unblockable. Uh, you know, you're, you're certainly looking at at least... Um, three to two unblockable damage and i think that that's super sneaky and the fact that it costs zero resources uh, is definitely going to go in the deck we have two copies of hidden motive probably the the only reason most people are splashing blue in, in certain support decks uh it's just a great mitigation card and for zero you really uh don't have much to lose uh the best play with this is just call out the thing that's going to hurt you the most and then everything else you just kind of deal with so uh, hidden motive just a, a great addition in this deck Two copies of Loth Wolf Bond. Now, again, this is uh, to kind of speed up our gameplay a little bit and to uh, gain a little bit more shield. So if you read this card, it basically says uh, give up to two of your blue characters uh, one shield each. You may activate those characters in the order of your choice. But if you really look at it, it is pay one for two shields and you can activate both characters. So it, it's really good to kind of like... Uh, you know, manipulate the pace of the game. Uh, it, it's a tempo play. It's something that you could certainly do if you seem like you're falling behind or you're going to not get the claim that you really wanted. So uh, Loth Wolf Bond, I think, is a great addition in Blue Hero decks. Uh, just to be able to uh, put on some pressure and get a bunch of dice in the pool as quickly as possible. We got one lonesome copy of Way of the Light. Now, it's just a good card. It's usually, uh, you know, pay one, remove one. But there are certain situations where I don't want to become flooded with this card and see it too often because it, it won't apply. It's very similar to uh, Electromagnetic Pulse. They have huge upsides, both of these cards. But the downside is they can potentially be a dead card. Uh, but something to note here is you can always grab neutral cards. So if, if there's a neutral die out on the on the um, the on your opponent's pool you know uh you can you can remove that so uh something to to keep in mind so i'm going to he hear a lot of uh, of heat for this but uh two copies of the og art defensive stance now i look at this card as the blue equivalent to field medic you know the blue heroes love to give shields uh it's kind of just something we're going to have to deal with moving forward um you know in the previous meta there were a lot of great cards to throw in blue decks in this one we kind of have to get creative and i i look at defensive stance in that fashion it is a um you know Put two, uh, put two health on my character or put two shields. Uh, we have to kind of look at it as the same. I know it's not exactly the same, but in this matchup, we kind of have to uh, make it work, especially being mono blue. Two copies of Deflecting Slash. Now, I think this card is super cool. Deflecting Slash is like a souped up... Um, what was it? Deflect? Just regular deflect? It, it is a more souped up version of that. And uh, so there's a lot here. So for one re uh, resource, it is activate one of your blue characters to remove a die showing ranged or indirect damage. If that character has the card titled Suresu Mastery on it, give it two shields. So it could be a super defensive turn when you, if you're able to play a Suresu Mastery uh, or like overwrite into it. 
and then play deflecting slash against like a vehicle deck or a ranged deck um, or you know we're, we're certainly going to see a lot more indirect uh, be flying around so this card I think is going to be pretty live um, but I do like it. you're just getting so much value you're removing uh, a ranged or indirect die you're activating one of your characters that's really good for for one resource but in addition if we do have Seresu mastery out on the board and on that character then we also get two shields so a whole lot of value for only one resource i think it warrants the uh two uh two copies we got one copy of Repulse. So again, our buddies over at ABG, they kind of got me hooked on this card. Uh, I think it's really good. It is a little steep in the in the cost uh, cost curve. It is two resources, and it is choose two dice that are different colors, then remove those dice. Uh, with a lot of decks that uh, aren't, aren't really mono in the format, uh, you can certainly gain some value off of this. And then uh, you got to consider that there are gray upgrades on, on mo in mono decks, um, you know, like Hidden Blasters and, you know, the, the new... Um, you know, sonic detonators, things like that. Uh, so you're able to possibly remove a character dice and the sonic detonator. That would be a huge play. Uh, again, you're able to, to just remove uh, a lot of different threats on board. And it's not... Um, you know, it's it's only subject to having different colors. Other than that, it can be any dice, any size, uh, what what have you. So uh, I think it's uh, it's good value, but I don't want to like again clog up the deck with too many uh, overcosted events. And then we have two copies of Beguile. Now you can make a case that uh, Repulse is probably better than Beguile in this format and in most cases but i still think beguile is just great because it can manipulate a couple dice at a time uh, so it's re-roll an opponent's die then turn one of their dice to any side then remove one of their dice so it can really throw off you know like a late game uh, pitch to re-roll they have no cards in hand and they rolled some pretty good fire then you play a beguile and uh, you're able to uh to kind of manipulate that uh, pretty pretty badly. So this is the deck. It's a blue hero melee deck. Uh, you know, tell me what you think. Comment down below. Uh, I'd certainly like to hear uh, any additions that you would like to add to a deck like this. And uh, I'll see you next time in the next casually competitive deck tech.